So let me explain min max. This is a unit that we can use inside of Grid to define our columns and our layouts. Uh, it's pretty powerful and it does a couple different things. You may have already seen some examples of a kind of classic bunch of boxes in rows and columns where they're, each of the boxes is flexible, each of those columns is flexible, they kind of grow and shrink with the amount of space that's available, and at a certain point you end up with more columns and fewer columns. With responsive web design, with media queries, and with columns that are sized using percents in a float-based world, you have to tell the browser how many columns to make at any given point. But with grid and with this min-max syntax, you don't need to do that. So here on the container, I've said display grid, grid template columns, repeat, autofin, min-max, 100 and 1FR. I have another video where I go into this particular kind of example in more detail, so you can look at that one. But the heart of this is this min-max syntax, where we're going to say, I want this, each of those columns to be a minimum of 100 pixels and a maximum of 1FR. Here's a different way that I'm using min-max, where instead of using that repeat autofit syntax, I'm just sizing a particular column using min-max. So the first column is 100 pixels, then 1FR, 1FR, min-max 40 characters to 65 characters, and 1FR. Characters is one of these things that, you know, we could easily say, oh, you're never supposed to size anything in character units. That's wrong. You must use M's or you must use REMs. REMs are the best. I think those ideas of what's best, we need to set all of those aside because everything is different now. And I'm intrigued by the idea of using characters by saying, I want this to be in between 40 characters and 65 characters wide. It's not actually going to look at the characters on the page, it's going to measure the width of the zero character for the font that is specified on the column, maybe not on the content in the column, but on the column itself, the grid container, and it's going to measure that out. What's going to happen is those FR columns are empty, and they're going to collapse when we start to squish the page. The FR columns are going to collapse down to zero while the min-max column stays at 65 characters, and then it's going to start to collapse which I find very intriguing. It gives us a kind of two-stage squishiness where the empty columns take away the empty space, the extra space disappears for the empty columns first, and then the content column starts to get smaller and smaller in order to fit into the available space. It really changes how we think about making a flexible web page. Min-max. It really changes what pixel perfect means using FR units, using min content, max content, using the min max syntax. These ways of measuring our columns or measuring our rows really takes us even further away from this idea that we're going after some sort of pixel perfect design, that the way to properly build a website is to measure a PDF and see that this is supposed to be 50 pixels and this is supposed to be 75 pixels and then somehow we like replicate that on the web. That's really not what we want to be designing. We want to be thinking about a flexibility model. We want to be thinking about what happens when parts of our content or parts of our interface are missing or they're longer than we expected or they're shorter than we expected and that somehow we need to make a kind of a model of, it's not 3D but almost like making a 3D model it's it's making a 2D object that's going to morph depending on the conditions that it's in we want to design flexibility models for our sites for our pages for our content and get away from this pixel, pixel perfect idea get totally away from this idea that it's going to look the same in all sorts of different situations what is the content? What is the interface? What is the use case? Why did users come to the page? And how can we best create a completely flexible layout in both the horizontal and vertical direction that will respond to the viewport that it's in and present everything in the best light possible? That's what CSS Grid gives us. That's what the future of layout is about.